So, what do you do if you're floating around the Earth, stuck in a space station, and you need a wrench? Well, you get one 3D printed, don't you? Now, I'm a little bit late to this game, but this is the first functioning tool that NASA ever 3D printed in space. And this happened back the very end of 2014, I think. So, yeah, I'm a few years late, but when I saw one of these printed the other day, I had to get one. And lucky enough, it turns out, NASA actually has released the files, so you can print the exact same one as they sent to space as the first tool, you know, just for shits and giggles. That's that's pretty much why I've done it. And while I was at it, I figured, why not print three? Check out some differences. These are printed all in one piece. As you can imagine, layers come through, and then it actually functions. Like a ratchet. So we'll have a, have a bit of a closer look at this and uh, test it out, tighten something up and have a look at the actual makeup and the construction of it. So the coolest thing about this is it's printed all in one piece and then they rip it off the printer, break this, this comes a little bit stiff, you can imagine there's still a little bit touching but you break it loose and you can hear the ratchet, you can hear the pull on the gear there, just keep going. So, it's a very, very interesting product. So by far, the most interesting thing about this wrench is NASA, they've set it up to space in their new 3D printer. I believe that all they'd printed from the 3D printer at this stage was just parts for the 3D printer. So a few extra cogs or whatever they needed in case it breaks down and then you're not stuck waiting on a shipment to the ship you know you've already you get it up there you make yourself your spares then you make other stuff if it breaks while making other stuff you've got the spares but this was supposedly the first thing they made after they made those spares and definitely the first usable tool and moving part so this is printed all in one piece and it moves so what we're going to do i did actually get three printed I got these in clear, you can almost see in them. I was hoping they'll be a little bit more clearer so we could look at the actual internal workings. But I do have the 3D model, so I'll reference that when I need to. So I got all of these printed in ABS plastic because that's what they use on the space station. But the, these two, there's two differences. The layer height. I went with the smallest layer height I could here and one size up here. I don't know what they used up at the space station, so I printed out both just in case and for curiosity we can compare how a fine layer height works against the thicker layer height. Still real thin, but this is the thicker layer height. Straight off the bat, this is a lot harder to turn. And you don't get that quite click. Whereas the final layer height, very happy to turn, but it's sloppy. See that slop in it? As opposed to... Well, okay, we had a problem here. Oh, we're down one already, so... That's a bummer. Lucky it was the thin one, so... We can still compare it to the black. But as I was saying with the black, with the with the final layer print, you get that wobble. You're not getting that with the thicker layer print. But the ratchet and pawl doesn't seem as happy to work with each other. The print size, like very snug fit, very nice in the thing. I keep wanting to press the back. I feel like it's a button, you know, to let the ball, the retention ball pop out, but it's, obviously it's not. So I've got the green mat out. So I'll show you the degrees of motion that these are pulling off. If I can do this, so. Let me get a GoGo gadget extension. 
Right, so what I've done here is I've got the green cutting mat out and we've just got to start it off right on the edge of 90. Can't go any further this way before hitting the pawls attached to the ratchet. That's the click and tension. So that was pretty much exactly 15 degrees. We'll just do it a few more times. Again. So what it has, for you to engage another tooth, you need to come back well past 15 and then it engages again. It's almost got a 10 degree slot past the 15 point. So you almost need 25 degrees to use this in a normal situation. We'll compare this just to, I think this is Stanley. Yeah, this is just Stanley. Very, very mid range, if not bottom range ratchet. Let's see if I can line this up again. Tension. We're getting about five degrees out of this. And then we'll compare it to a stubby little friend, even though this is a quarter and this is a 3 16th, just for shits and giggles. This will be a lot finer, but this is what you'd need in this sort of torque range that you're gonna be getting with this. They rate this to three inch pounds, so. Oh yeah, that's, that's a couple degrees. And very little slop needed to get back to the return. Whereas this, once you've come past, oh, this one's stiff as. Once you've come enough past to click, you don't have to bring it forward. So the angle of use might not be the best in this but it's still pretty decent. And the fact that it ratchets at all and functions in that form is brilliant. It would be a lot easier for them just to make one of these that doesn't even function and get a lot more strength out of it. You've got less chance of overriding the gears. You could probably staunch this a little bit harder, so less chance of losing that. It's quite disappointing that that's gone, but whatever. I suppose while we got it out, we might as well give them a measure. They come in just past 110 mil versus this is standard average size quarter, which is 145, almost 150. Side three quarter is coming in almost 200 mil. So it's interesting that they've got the handle length is probably by design, not only to save material, but to limit the torque multiplier that you have in the lever between the force put on here and the pivot here. It's only rated three inch, so there's no point giving you, you know, one meter handle and a cheetah bar to add to it. If you just kind of do this. Right, what I'm gonna do here is to vary very rudimentary and unscientific tests. First one is these two splice plate bolts. I'm gonna tighten one up with one wrench, one up with the other wrench. One with the printed, one with the non-printed, and then we're gonna test to see which one's got more thread showing. I dare say with my measurement, we're not gonna see, but I'll get a general indication of how how strong it is. Put it in the old trusty. So I've got these two fish plate bolts in the vise. In fairness, I'm only gonna put my wrist here just to compensate from the extra leverage. Not that it should matter. If we do see any difference here, it's not gonna be the biggest difference in the world, so.
So that's proper tight. Yeah, I know, plastic. Very, very, very precise. And we're running. Eight point six mil showing. Now we'll swap over to this is the rigid. This is printed with a bigger layer height, so hopefully this holds up better to the punishment. Then the micro layer height that I've already broken. So that's it, it hit the... Oh, we've done it again. However, that did... That got it very, quite tight. Wouldn't say very tight. I can't get it off of my fingers. I think this case study is unfair because I ordered these at 100% infill and they're quite clearly not 100% infill. I might as well undo these just for the sake of it. Yeah. yeah. So I had this one half as tight as this one. But this test is, it's set, it's throw, I got the it's, I'm actually very upset about this. I'm pretty pissed off, just tits on a ball. I paid him good money. He took two to three weeks longer than he should have and he didn't give me what I ordered. What's the point of having an order form if you're not gonna get what you ordered? I'm ten, I was gonna wind these Dyna bolts through, see so we can have an actual measurement of how far I got through with these versus this before you know petered out and started blowing out this piece. No point just snapping my last one. I mean it's still a conversation piece. Uh, I might order some better ones, get a digital torque adapter, but so I made another arm. I thought about abandoning this video completely because it's not a fair justice to the engineering feat and what they've created. But I'll just show you why, why what they've done has ruined the integrity. Essentially what I've just done is color in where we had surface area touching. So when I requested 100% infill, he's looked at the print time, he said, stuff that. I'm gonna just print it how I wanna print it, bang him out. He was late by a couple of weeks, so this is the sort of problem that throws people off, sort of thing that really disheartens you about, you know, the making community, the, the, the there's blokes out there doing really good stuff killing it. Just always doing fun things, creating new things. I mean, NASA was so kind just to release this to the world so everyone can have, can have a look at it and say, you know, this technology that's been around for years, decades, forever, and then it's also a new technology about making it work and it's just real cool. The way that they've managed to print the gear and the pole and how it all works together in the one print with the layers, that's all great. You know, uh, I ordered three off this guy and I explained to him I was prototyping and testing and seeing what it could, well, not prototyping, but I was testing and I was going to check him out and he's gone and just, he's cheaped out on me. Didn't deliver on time, didn't deliver the right product, so. Bad bloke, mate. Bad bloke. Alright, so I've just run a hacksaw around it. I mean, what good is it for anything else? 
There you go. Clearly, clear as day, as you can see by all the divots and the... It's... This was never 100%. I mean, this is the strongest way to do it without the infill, but it's just not what I ordered. Uh, so I actually managed to not destroy the gear too much. So this is the paw. Just a little tab. And the gear. You can see the very edges of the gear will be what's fixed when you first print. And then you're breaking it off. <clears throat> it's very smooth on the inside. You'd feel like these layers would also be attached. So it's quite genius the way the tolerances that they've designed. So we'll call this a minor hiccup along the way. We will strike again. I would like to, I'm gonna have to find another, another supplier, not so much main because I feel like they've let me down this time. But we can expand on this, we can change the dimensions, we can make it bigger, we can make it longer. We can try out some three part tools. They're never gonna be as good as their metal counterparts, but it's fun to try and why not?